Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. You pay the price, the highest price, and I'm so grateful. For your love, you took my place, and now I stand to be called your very own, it's because you leave Jesus I I have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you Jesus I need to stay. Holy Spirit we thank you for your ministry in this place tonight. You are here to glorify Jesus again and even to glorify the saints. We humble ourselves, we submit to your wisdom, and we ask, O oh God, that your word will find expression unrestrained. I pray that your ministry of making men will proceed unhindered tonight. I decree, O oh God, and I declare that every single one of us will leave this place transformed, will leave this place edified, and will leave this place with our expectations met. Thank you again because of the confidence we have in both your presence and your ability. We decree and declare that forever Jesus and him alone be glorified in this place. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone around again. Please pick up your notebooks. Let's get to the teaching for tonight. Come up hither, part two, for rounding up. Um, I've been thinking very carefully about the subject of transformation. I really have been passionately thinking about the subject of transformation. I am convinced that any man of God that lacks the ability to partner with the Holy Spirit in transforming men um, should not be in ministry. This is my honest opinion. Number two, I believe that any platform, whether a church, a fellowship, where the presence of God cannot prevail over men to bring them first into conformity to the image of the Christ and second, to be able to bring them into the reality of their inheritance in Christ, that place deserves to be shot. It does not qualify to be called a church or any kind of gathering whatsoever. Praise the Lord. So all the teachings that we bring here are designed to achieve many things. Um, you must understand. Number one, designed to help us know God. It matters to God. It also matters to me that we know God. That our knowledge of God continues to progress. It's important to know God. It really is important to know God because in the knowledge of God is our confidence. Please listen. In the knowledge of God is our stability. If your knowledge of God is very low, you will not be able to survive today's world. Are we together? It matters. Thank God for the wonderful testimonies, but 
the pride of the believer according to scripture is not in the acquisition of things please listen very carefully whether you have a car whether you have a house whether a door was opened whether you get married whether your wife gives birth to quadruplets all these wonderful things as interesting as they are they are truly um secondary matters the real pride of the believer is your knowledge of god no matter what you have if you do not know god you don't have anything it's difficult to understand this because we need most of the things we chase but i'm telling you by and large the real pride of the believer is your knowledge of god let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength he says let him that glory yet glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me so the messages are designed to give us encounters to increase our conviction about the person of god number two the messages are designed to show us god's methodologies you, you have to write this the teachings are designed to open us up to what we call the ways of God. His methodologies. The way he operates. This, this, this camera man is operating this camera through knowledge. He knows how the camera works. It's not enough to be given the camera as a gift. You must know how it works. Are we together now? Both of them are standing behind their various gadgets on the strength of knowledge. No one will just get up out of zeal and stand behind the camera. They will not be able to do anything much. It matters not only that we know God, but that we understand His ways. I will continue to repeat this until you are well indoctrinated with this truth. That the knowledge, please listen, the knowledge of God... The knowledge of his person is infinite. It will take us eternity to really know God. But the knowledge of his ways, as far as our excelling in this life is concerned, they are finite. They can be learned, they can be known, and you can apply them. It takes a fool to believe God will put infinite methodologies to continue to learn. As far as our excelling is concerned. No. The keys that we need to excel in life are finite. You can hold them and know that these are the keys given to men to excel. So the messages are designed to show us. To cause us to see. Number three. The messages are designed to allow the Holy Spirit to invade our lives and produce dimensions of results in and through our lives that only God can produce. The messages are like ushers. So it is not unusual that whilst the message is coming, the Holy Spirit is just moving in the midst of His people bringing deliverance, bringing healing, bringing breakthroughs. The messages were designed to be conducive for the operation of the Spirit. There are certain things that cannot be taught. There are experiences that only the might of God can produce. This is the limitation of the teaching ministry when it is done purely from a religious standpoint. It will only end up educating people. There are some results that do not depend on education. People need to encounter the power of God and have situations in their lives change immediately. Praise the Lord. There are believers who come before God with emergencies. They don't need to learn any law. They don't need to learn any principle. They can learn when the situation has been solved the urgency will not allow them to give god their attention so you're not going to bring you're not going to help them by trying to say oh you're in a situation you know listen listen um you'll be learning a lot today you hear people say things like miracle alert and all of that 
Um, God's idea is not to keep you in the realm of alerts. You know that. Um, you're not going to be able to feed your family just with alerts. But that there are people who are in situations where it's a waste to give them any book on wealth. The urgency at that point requires a miracle here and now. And so God must be allowed to step in and let them experience his hand. And then when they are at ease, they can now sit down and learn the ways of God that makes for sustainable results. If every miracle comes just through the understanding of principles alone, then many believers will die and never live to learn all they need to be victorious. God is that merciful to solve your problems while you learn. God is that merciful to let you experience his power while you are growing. We cannot, we, we can't peg everybody to receive results only at their level of transformation. It is dangerous. Because there are people who, um, they are where they are not because of anything of themselves. They have come from backgrounds that will not allow them. Let me give you an instance. A man of 60, 70 years, intellectually speaking, his rate of assimilation will be a lot slower than a young man of 20 to 25. Is that true? And so if God is to allow that man learn and know everything about breakthrough, to experience breakthrough, that man will probably need the next 10 or 15 years of consistent mentorship. So unique to that man's condition, he will experience a dimension of God's mercy that only his age range can allow. You will be surprised to find out that whether he understands what the preacher is understanding or not, God will route him to be under the grace preaching, not under the knowledge. He will not get results just by understanding. Because he probably will be sleeping when the message is going on. And God's mercy is wise enough to shift him to a zone where he can still be a partaker of the hand of God. This is very powerful. Now, if that guy begins to allow you to use his life as a standard, you are in trouble. Because the man is not even aware that something special was done to him. So he will say, you can see my life. I didn't do anything. God just keeps blessing me any day. And then you will try to do that at 21. And you will be very surprised. When God vetoes his principles, he's not neglecting them. Is how far his love can go. It matters that we know God. There is a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ. Not ignorance in terms of absence of knowledge. Ignorance in terms of ill-constructed spiritual information. Information that was not constructed properly to provide victory. So we have a little here and a little there, like materials for building a house, but not well structured. Random spiritual information scattered around our spirits and our mind. And we fish out anyone in the face of danger. We continue to fish them out one by one, hoping at least one can work. But platforms like this were provided to give us accuracy so that your understanding will be very exact. You are not guessing. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your One more time with faith in your heart. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you. This is your house, your
come up here, that is an attempt to challenge us to rise beyond the dimensions of God that we have seen and known to a place of greater perfection, to a place of greater accuracy. Revelations chapter 4. Revelations chapter 4. I want you to continue to believe the things that you are learning. The integrity of God is behind the things you are learning. And I give you a guarantee that if you pay attention to labor in the word, to know God and to know his ways, you will be remarkably surprised at how powerful, how powerful God can be when given space through obedience and alignment in the life of a man. When I don't have results in an area, I make sure that I minimize conversing in that area because I do not have the authorization to speak. It is foolish to argue when you do not have results. Our world, many believers are confused today because of the interruption that the pride of resultless people continue to bring in the process of mentorship. That while God is teaching people principles, here comes another dimension of pride in ignorance, interrupting the pace of conviction and assimilation. If I had my way and I had to mentor believers, I would isolate them. I would take it like a system of quarantine somewhere. And then we'll sign a disclaimer that if by listening to this man of God for these years and obeying under God, you do not get these results, you hold the person liable. Many of us do not learn because there are interruptions to our convictions. Just when you are about to settle on something as true, here comes a message that delays your believing it. So you start another journey of six months in argument based on what I've had now. Should I believe or should I not believe? While you are, you are debating, you are suffering and your family members are paying the price. Take the risk. Trust something. Take the risk. Is worth the risk to throw yourself and say, let me at least believe something. God, help me. If I fail, let your mercy be there to pick me up. But take the risk. Don't stand in foolishness today. You are here tomorrow. You are there. You are arguing. And while you are doing that, time is going. Take the risk. You must believe something. When Jesus met people who had convictions, he had respect for them. Although their convictions were on wrong philosophies, he respected the fact that they could peg their convictions on something exact. Are we together? Mm. A man who does not have conviction in anything is a dangerous man. He's a dangerous man. Don't stay near that person. It's better to have convictions in the wrong thing. That's why it was easy for God to convert Saul. He believed he was doing God's service by persecuting the Christians. And when God revealed himself, he switched immediately. There was no embarrassment. But the scribes and Pharisees, they wouldn't let Jesus alone to preach. They would be at his crusades. And yet they would never believe. You see how difficult it was? The woman by the well. Madam, you have seven husbands, six husbands. Yes, sir. This and that and that. Yes, sir. And she was changed immediately. The madman in Gadara. You have demons. Yes, sir. You need them to leave. Yes, sir. The demons too spoke. Go and leave the man in peace. And ten cities were saved. Don't be near God. Be connected to him. It's dangerous to be around. You will see everything that is happening. But you will never partake of it. God is not asking for proximity. 
is asking for intimacy. Just because you are near God and you are aware of what He can do does not mean you will ever experience Him. Are we together? Revelations 4. After this, verse 1, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things that must be thereafter. We'll stop from verse 4. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like Jasper. Remember that this was not the first time he was beholding the face of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 1, he saw at a level. Now he's seeing again, and he's seeing something different that he did not see before. And there was rainbow round about the throne, in sight, like unto an emerald, verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their head crowns of gold. Praise the Lord. He said, come up hither and I will show you. Come up hither. So the reason why I am asking you to rise is because there is something I want to do to your sight. Please pay attention. That the growth of a believer is based on spiritual illumination. That in this kingdom, your growth is based on the access to the truths, the light that you can see much more than here. Come up hither. He didn't say come. You don't need to come up hither to hear. Like those who are outside now, without the projector stand, they can hear, but they cannot see. Are we together now? You do not need to come up hither to hear. But if you want to see, Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. Why? So that I will see what he shall say unto me. Not I will hear, I will see light, growth through spiritual illumination. It is a big deal to God. That the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Please listen. The victory that has been wrought for us in Christ will remain a story until illumination opens us up to the experience. Please understand this. The mysteries of the kingdom were not designed to remain mysteries. So when we say they are mysteries, we are not just saying some hidden things that were locked up. God desires them to be seen. That's why he gave us the spirit. Your growth in the kingdom will take more than desire. Please listen. Your growth in the kingdom will be on the strength of the quality of your spiritual illumination. Ephesians chapter 3, we we'll read from verse 8. Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. Please give it to us. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. Look up please. It's projected. He it says, Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given. What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Next verse. We are reading tonight. He says, And to make, read with me, all men see. Stop. It's a ministry given to a man to make men see. All men, not some men. Not to make men of God see. You are mandated by the grace of God to make men see. Because it is only as we behold that we are changed. Hearing does not change people. As we behold him as in a mirror, the Bible says the glory of God. We are changed. Transformation is difficult until you can see a reference. Please understand what I'm saying. So that in this kingdom, growth is through spiritual illumination. 
So come up hither is a call, a divine call by the Spirit of God to the saints to rise to a higher realm that can allow your eyes to see, to see, to allow your eyes to see the deep things, the Bible says, the deep things of God. Because when you see higher, then your life will become that. And listen, listen. Success generally in life is, is a measure of what you attract to your life by who you have become. You have to understand this. It is not so much of what you do, but who you have become. The realities that you attract to your life on the strength of the new versions of yourself you continue to become. And that happens through knowledge, through light. Spiritual illumination. This is where the major ministry of the Holy Spirit. Do you know, listen, listen, listen. It is very easy to be born again. The Bible says so. That if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Are we together now? Is the word sozo. That you are saved by believing in your heart and then confessing, verbalizing it. But then when the Holy Spirit comes, listen, the, if you would permit me to use the word, the most difficult assignment of the Holy Spirit in the saints is the, the rigor of babysitting the believer until he gets to a point where he allows the Holy Spirit to show him the light that it takes to rise in experience. For many of us, we can be born again. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues, and we believe that by that initiation, we have become Pentecostals, as we call ourselves. And then we stay there and never grow and never see and continue to believe that just because time is passing and you can say i've been born again five years they say how long did you know the lord you say five years that's not a very correct answer it may be correct historically but it's not correct in terms of transformation you are not five years in the lord is your results that will show how old you are in the lord you are five years from the day you got born again historically but that may not be a measure of your true age in the realm of the spirit our age is measured by the light that we command we excel in light not in time the degree of spiritual illumination that you receive in your life is a measure of your growth so we continue to flatter ourselves that just because historically we can count a time period by earth's timing from when we consciously gave our lives to Christ, we believe that automatically, as time passes, growth is happening. No, the only dimension of growth that is automatic is biological growth. Every other kind of growth must be engaged through knowledge. You grow intellectually by assimilating knowledge, knowledge along the path of a field. Is that true? So you can find an adult who is 20 years, respectfully so, but cannot speak English. Is that true? Cannot speak another language. The person is an adult by biological standards, but when you shift to an intellectual standard, that person is a child. So, the passage of time, chronos, does not just make for spiritual growth automatically. The same way it does not make for growth in other aspects. Growth is engaged. It does not happen by default. Please understand this. This is where the pride of many, many Christians lie. We convince ourselves. And you know, sometimes, I'll be talking about it shortly, the, the, the danger of the ritual of tradition. Just because you have been known to be around the things of God for a long time, usually when an election or an appointment in church you understand, eldership or a deacon, most likely you will be the suitable candidate just to honor the longevity of time you spend around the things of God. 
but it may be the wrongest decision that may have been made. Oh, this man has been 20 years in the Lord. He's a veteran in the things of God. And while they are talking, God is saying, what, what are you talking about here? Who is the veteran? A veteran is a master. One who by reason of his life and the testimonies that come has been able to test the truth. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled of the word of life. That's what we teach. Because some of us may need to honestly admit that from the day you got born again, this year was the first step. Although it's 10 years. You got born again 10 years ago. But the first correct result producing step started in 2019. So technically, you are about to be one year old. As far as your age with respect to transformation is concerned. Imagine if that one year old man is your man of God. Is the one who was given the mandate to raise you spiritually. Are we together? With gaps in his understanding. What do you think you will become? He will make you distrust what you already know before you met him. The confidence he has in his ignorance will affect you. The vacillations in his understanding will threaten your conviction. The Bible says to be steadfast, to be immovable. It doesn't mean to be rigid so that you cannot change, but that when you find truth and it has been vetted as truth, stay there. Stay there and be there. For instance, if you have believed that there are many gods and Jesus is just one of them, that's a conviction. But now when you are exposed to the truth that there is no other name under heaven, given to man by which we must be saved. Now you have the flexibility to change. And when you find out in truth, by the spirit, and by the testimony of brethren around you, that Jesus is truly the way, the truth and life. You stay there. In life and in death, this is my position about the pathway to salvation. That means if I have the opportunity to debate with an atheist, I'm not about to make some historical jargons. This is my conviction by the Spirit that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot understand this reality scientifically. You can only open up your heart for the Spirit of grace to minister this as an encounter. Are we together? To make all men see. To make all men see. To make all men see. I want to deal with something tonight that the Lord put in my heart. Still in an attempt to bring us into an accurate understanding of the ways of God. The danger of what the Bible calls the traditions of men. There is such a thing in scripture called the traditions of men. And the Bible is not careful to reveal to us how far this concept, this way of life can, can interrupt the rising of the saints to the pinnacle of their Christian experience. Colossians chapter 2 please and verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you. The word spoil you there is to make a prey out of you. Like you go to war and you, they say you spoil the people. You conquer the land and take their treasures and add to your treasures. He said, beware, lest any man spoil you. Through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. Now this concept has been interpreted from the lens of all manner of, you know, all kinds of theological dimensions. 
But it is true that there is something called the traditions of men. And that the Bible says that it can make men become praise. One more scripture. Matthew chapter 15. We'll read from verse 2. Matthew chapter 15. Now, some gentlemen just came to harass Jesus and his disciples. Watch the story. We're reading to verse 9. Why do thy disciples transgress what? The traditions of the elders. Someone is asking Jesus a question now. So let's listen to what Jesus is about to say. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Three. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? What do you do? You transgress the commandment of God by your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. Five. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, um, It is a gift by whatsoever thou shalt, you know, thou mightest be profited by me. Six. We are reading to nine. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. That means if you can bribe your way out of honor and be free, tradition created that concept. You, you get the point now? Thus, ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Please take note of this. Let's just finish up. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, uh -huh, These people draw it near to me with their mouth and honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Last verse. But in vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In rising to superior spiritual dimensions, the Bible tells us that we are going to confront a demon. We are going to confront a, a resistance. Are we together now? And the Bible calls that resistance not Satan. He doesn't even call the resistance um, sin. He calls it what? The traditions of men. What is it exactly? What is the tradition of men? Let me tell you this. The goal of this teaching is not to produce rebels. Let me clear the air straightforward before I begin to teach. The idea, listen carefully please. The idea is not to get up in self-pride. And move around and begin to fight people who seem to sustain revelations that are inferior to yours. I think I need to put this disclaimer very clearly. Are we together? The idea, any, listen, any lifting in the spirit that makes you arrogant and makes you a difficult person and extracts the love dimension from you has been corrupted. Because growth in the spirit that comes from God must also come with his nature of humility and love. Are we together? These two things must, they are the litmus tests of the purity of your spiritual growth and your revelation. The humility, the Bible calls it humbleness of heart. And then the richness of the love of God in you. That if I claim to grow spiritually, and the more I am learning, the more pride is also growing in me. It could be that I am being indoctrinated by the vain babblings of men. Revelation that comes from God in its purest form, number one, produces humility. Number two, produces love. You now look at those who did not have the privilege of having that truth from the lens of compassion. It's important that I say this because I think this is one of the reasons why and what we call the new move of God, if not managed, will become another dimension of religion too. Everybody in the body of Christ right now has given himself the ministry of correcting every other body. So that's what is going on in the body of Christ now. Everybody who has access to the pulpit is correcting someone, young or old. That's what is trending. Correction. Everybody is showing how everybody is wrong. It's terrible. Spiritual knowledge should not culminate in dividing the body. It should not culminate in producing arrogant people. No. 
Paul, at the height of his revelation, he said, I who am the least of all the brethren, is this grace given? It is a grace to make men see, to open their eyes. When I rebuke them, it is a grace. When I correct them, it is a grace. It's more than a desire. You've heard me say, correcting the body of Christ is a grace. Just because you observe error does not give you the fortitude and the authorization to correct. Because in correcting, many people have begun another error. It's easy for error to start. It just starts as an opinion strongly received. And very soon you will forget about the reason why you started it. And enjoy the new celebrity status you gain for being controversial. There is a grace to correct the body. There is a grace to adjust people and bring them within the dimensions of truth. So I'm putting this disclaimer very strongly so that you don't mix every young preacher and just believe that all together they are carrying out a campaign either to rebel against fathers or to rebel against denominations. No. My position as a person about the body of Christ is very, very clear. I will never dishonor the body to communicate truth. I was sent to the body. Are we together? It matters that we understand this. So that if the things I say sound difficult, for instance, then you, you refer to what I just said, that he's speaking not from the standpoint of sarcasm, the goal is to wean us out of imperfection, to bring us into maturity. Come up here, a realm of maturity, where you come out of certain things that can peg your growth, hence your results. It is true that there are many things that need to be adjusted in the body of Christ. It is true that there are many mainstream beliefs that need to be edited and adjusted. Please listen carefully. It is true that there are many things that have been proposed by we preachers, well-meaning, sincere mostly, that still needs correction. Are we together now? But it is also true that an attempt to correct other things is an attack. There are things that are ordinances, no matter how con controversial they sound. Calling the body higher must not be from the lens of our convenience. It must be from the lens of God's truth. That means that I will be a wicked man of God to teach you only what is convenient, either based on my educational perspective. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. Let's assume that because of my philosophical standpoint about the miraculous, I don't believe the miraculous. Did you know that every time I read and we reach the miraculous, I will just jump it and wave it away? And sitting under me, you will find out that you are deficient in that level of understanding. Because I do not believe it, I'm not interested in it, it's not working in my life for instance, so I trivialize it and I force you to trivialize it. A good man of God must be able to stand and teach truth even if it hurts you. That means your goal is the lifting of the people more than the preservation of your name and your reputation. This is a faithful servant of God. That if for instance... I have thought that healing is wrong. Miracles are wrong. And now I have found the truth. I must sustain the courage to say I have found out that God is still a miracle worker. Someone may look and say, what is miracle alert? Nonsense. There's no such thing as that. You now see. It is true that believers were not designed to live based on miracle alert. But it will be foolish to ignore the fact that there is a provision in God's economy where he can come through for people. So in an attempt, to, an attempt to transit you to a level of greater financial stability, I just extract away the spirituality of wealth. 
and I just let you know, go and get a job and be, and be nice. You will be ready for a shock because this world is full of spirits. Full of what? That's right. Then on the other hand, if all we do is to tell you miracle alert and that's all you will get. The end of it is that we will leave you a superstitious and a confused people. Are you seeing that? You will never build one bungalow in your entire lifetime with that philosophy. You cannot have sustainable results. Why? Because your mind has been, spe- has been pegged around the, the, the ignorance that it is God's God's, it is based on God to do everything he wants to do. That's not true. Are you understanding what I'm sharing tonight? The word tradition comes from the Greek word paradosis. P-A-R-A-D-O-S-I-S. It can be translated ordinances. It can be translated precepts. That's where we get the word tradition. So it talks of ordinances. It talks of precepts, methodologies that were created by men. Either as a product of culture or as a product of pride or as a product of aberrated encounters that were not consistent with the word. Listen very carefully. There are many methodologies today that came as a result of supposed encounters. Look up, please. Look up, please. Look up, please. Let me balance something now. And especially around, respectfully, let me call what we call, um, is it fair to call it the holiness movement? That several people supposedly have gone to hell and have gone to heaven and they have brought forth standards many of them as emotional and impacting as they look are not consistent with the conditions provided that by scripture that makes for a believer to make heaven are you seeing that now and if you are not careful and and by this i'm not necessarily even talking of things that pertain on to dressing and all of that those ones are established truths that were there long before I know people that claim to have gone to hell and saw almost every man of God that, that has transited in glory. Now, that kind of thing, the, the vision receiver does not know that he or she is under an attack. Just because you went to the realm of the spirit does not mean you are free. The word of God is still Lord, even over the realm of the spirit. You have to understand this. You can travel to a dimension that you have never been before and see all kinds of things. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, anything you see there is higher than what you have known on earth and you can easily receive it. And come back with doctrines that later will become traditions, precepts, ordinances. There are people who have returned with revelations that they saw believers who did not type in hell. I don't believe that. There is nowhere in scripture that shows that non tithing takes a man to hell. There are people, for instance, who have returned and, and have given all kinds of propositions that they saw people who had given their lives to Christ just because of issues here and there in their lives they still found them in hell I don't believe that listen Jesus listen very carefully I teach you sound doctrine when Lazarus listen carefully Lazarus and the rich man the rich man made a request and he asked he asked Jesus. He said, please, let Lazarus come back to life. Huh? And let Lazarus come and preach to my brethren. And tell them that I am there. In Hades, the place of the dead. And then he says, no, they have the law and the prophets. That means, he said, even if Lazarus should come back to life, they will not believe. But sufficient is the law and the prophets listen to them 
I still speak to men who are in the earth realm. And I still have the truth of scripture that can guide men. The average believer now is not sure whether he will make heaven or not. It's like we're waiting to see. Let the trumpet just sound and then I will, if I'm qualified, I will know. But it's wrong. When a woman is pregnant, she knows. When a student graduates, he knows. When you are hungry, you know. When you are full, you know. When you are crying, you know. Why would salvation be that vague? It means something. Listen to what I'm saying. You know I gave you a disclaimer. It is not about tell them or anything. I'm teaching you truth. I'm bringing you to a point of certainty. Where you know that you know that you know. Are we together? Yes. There are many concepts in the body of Christ as it is now. That will destroy the saints. If not adjusted. If not upgraded. And sometimes if not totally taken out of the way. Please listen. I will just run through a few of these concepts with you. And then if God grants grace, we can touch a few and pray. Am I boring you? Mm. Number one. There is a big problem with the biblical understanding, the biblical concept of greatness. Greatness is one of the most controversial issues right now in the body of Christ. What is the standard of greatness? What is the difference between mediocrity or where is the line between mediocrity and contentment? Please listen very carefully. Where is the line between striving to be all that God designed for you to be and lost? You have to pay attention because in both cases you will find scripture that encourage both. You will find scriptures that encourage you. Scriptures like the path of the just is as a shining light speak to me believers that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day and yet you will find scriptures like godliness with contentment is great gain so while you want to quickly rise to the shining light here comes another scripture godliness with contentment is great gain then it continues by saying we brought nothing to this world and it is certain that listen carefully I'm teaching you something that will make you a sound believer. It is certain that we can take nothing out of this world. But that having food and raiment, let us be content. So why do I need a master's? Why do I need a PhD? Why do I need to be the highest professor in that department? Here the Bible is telling me. Are we together? I read a scripture that says, I search for a man, you know, to stand in the gap. And I say, Lord, I'm the person that will rise. The next verse you are reading is, teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Any dimension that you want to look at life from, the Bible seems to support it. That means there has to be a grace to put things in order. Please listen to me very carefully. Because many innocent people, people destroyed houses that they started to limited level. Somebody came with a vision and another person will carry bulldozer and scatter everything and say this I will, and will be a missionary. By the next week, he will carry a bell and a cassock and stand by the road with no one listening to him, ringing the bell and shouting and saying, repent, I know what I saw. He, it may not be a lie. But something about the inaccuracy of spiritual communication has destroyed that man. Ten years later, he will find out again he was wrong. While he did that, his children did not go to school. While he did that, the land he had has been taken away by a thief and they built a hotel on it. Life may not allow you to make certain mistakes and come back to correct yourself. That's why God is teaching you this now. There are people who made some of these mistakes and had the luxury of returning back. But you can't return others who believe what you said before. What is the balance about greatness? This greatness thing has been fought. Another concept 
What is God's idea of spiritual maturity? Everybody claims to be matured in the body of Christ. At least biologically, there's no confusion. Our little ones cannot claim they are mature. Their foolishness will be obvious. Just give them five minutes, they will do something that will prove immediately that they are children. And an adult, no matter how foolish an adult is, he will not become a child again. You are an adult, it's too late. You are just an unwise adult. Are we together? But spiritually, listen, how can I know that this person is matured spiritually? There are many parameters we are put in the body of Christ. And many of them are largely not consistent with God's idea. Let me give you another, another concept. What exactly is our call as believers? What is our mandate as believers? This has been a big confusion in the body of Christ. Please pay attention. What is our mandate? Others say our mandate is to take over everywhere. Others say you are not taking over anything. Our mandate is just to be born again and to wait until we leave. When are you going to take over Dubai? Have you seen that? There are many people who argue that our mandate is to make Nigeria become like Dubai. The kingdoms of this world. And others say, look, Nigeria will not be Dubai. Stop dreaming. Win souls and make sure souls are saved and rapturable. And both concepts have biblical backings. Please listen. I love to teach these kinds of things. What is our call as believers? Is your call to be a lecturer or to be a preacher or to be a soul winner? Ask the average believer on the street, what is your call? Some will say to win souls, nothing but souls. Another person will say to, to, to build a house for God. What does that mean? Next concept. The subject of faith. The subject of what? Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. The subject of faith. Where is the balance? What is God's idea of faith? It's been a disturbing concept. You notice that there are so many people in the body of Christ who tell you, look, all this faith, faith thing, leave it away. And others say, no, 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 no. The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes. It even says the just shall live by faith. Four times scattered through scripture. In one of the renditions, it says the just shall live by his faith. Next concept. Our interpretation of tragedy and negative situations. Our interpretation of tragedy. I'm just giving you a few of them. There are many. The discussion is come up here. A higher level of more accurate spiritual illumination. And I'm showing you the things that have pegged our maturity in the body of Christ. Our inability to find stability in these areas. These are the areas that challenge our convictions again and again. Vacillating concepts. What happens when a loved one dies? Another person says, no way. No way. There's no evil in God. And the person cannot die. Another person says, I was in the hospital when I had the person saying, Lord, into your, your, if not spirit, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And he had the person. And the prayer seemed to be answered. He died immediately. Then another person says, no, 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 no. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. God cannot be the author of this death. Where is the balance as to the nature of God as far as interpreting tragic situations? In fact, there are many who it is so, it is so, um, it is even so extreme. That anything at all that represents, even if your car stops on the road, based on the propositions that have been given, you have questions to answer. The first question is, where is your faith? The second question is, where is your God? Now, many believers are confused. 
And then there are others who just allow anything to happen as though believing that God is a miracle worker and believing that God is a way maker is a lie. We have extended it now to fight songs. We fight songs, remember? Everybody is fighting every song now. I guess we'll start singing scriptures directly. Just sing. At least nobody will fight scripture. Just open to Exodus chapter this and say, look. And he said this and that. We know we have passed from death to life. Just compose it so that nobody argues any concept. There are people who one little mistake, even linguistic mistake, is attacked. And while they are attacking the song, someone else is having an encounter with that same song. Rolling before God and shouting that song. Next concept. One of the very controversial ones again. The concept of fatherhood and mentorship. Hmm. Fatherhood, mentorship, covering, partaking of a grace, and so on and so forth. It's a very serious concept in the body of Christ. There are both sides of the pendulum when dealing with these issues. There are people, for instance, who have made this issue of fatherhood and mentorship such a big deal as though even your salvation is determined by another man. There are people who will not eat food until it is approved. There are people who cannot travel until it is approved. When, when a woman is pregnant, her pastor knows first before her husband. And yet the Bible says what God has joined. Let no man he didn't say let no spirit put it. That's a way of putting asunder. Because the man can say, well, that means that what you are trying to say in essence is that this child is not my own. And the same Bible says, wives, submit to your own husbands. There are members whose salary the pastors know to the digital detail that even their wives do not know. All of that is under the umbrella of fatherhood and mentorship. There are churches that are almost like cults. You cannot make up your mind that, look, I'm tired, I love you, man of God, but I think I need to leave. I, I sense that God is calling me somewhere. Any other bad thing that happens to you by leaving, the man of God takes credit for it as his grace fighting you. Something is wrong. Listen very carefully. Remember the disclaimer I gave before I started? You now see why I gave it? Cult-like approaches of Christianity. A man of God can step into any house at any time. Peace be unto this house. And just say, what do you have? Oh, man of God, what do you want? Anything for you. Okay, uh, pounded yam and vegetable soup. Let me have goat's meat. And, and you know, all, all kinds of things that we do. These are poisonous concepts. What of the ones that they collect? A, a, a member will receive the blessing from God and buy a new car. And the pastor will collect it. What of houses that have been collected by people? In the name of, uh, of, uh, of Isaac. Are you seeing that now? I'm addressing concepts with you. What of marriages that have broken as a result of the recommendation of a supposed father or a mentor? That you sit down and veto that I, as a man, I will never mention my name, I, as so, 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 as so man of God, I hereby don't like this marriage because the wife is not kind or nice to me and I use my spiritual authority to break this marriage. And the son says, yes sir, your wish is my command. It's occultism. What about accrediting life partners? That a man can be with his wife and all of a sudden from nowhere 
the Geo's wife or the Geo can look and say, this guy is a serious partner in this church. This woman is coming to carry him out of the church. It is scattered. Dangerous and devilish. What of choosing for people where they should walk? Simply because of the selfishness of their service in your church. God gives someone open door of 250,000 in, in, in an oil company. And he has another job of, of 35,000 35, near your neighborhood. And he said, I know God. I, God wants you here simply because you are the one in charge of sound. And I rather keep you there than to employ another person. What of turning members into masons to build, to build? Please don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not fighting anybody. The message is called Come Up Hither. We are challenging concepts that fight our being accurate in the spirit. They are traditions of men. If I'm building this Koinonia Cathedral, and your head does not carry one block. That's how difficult it will remain on you. No, sir. No, sir. And you see members running to make sure at least one block is on their head. And I shake off every, every, uh, um, 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 uh, what do we call it? Every difficulty in my life. Now, listen. That also does not mean that by faith you can connect your service to breakthrough. Because people have done it. They have connected their service to certain victims. There is a provision in the dealings of God, but it's not by threat and manipulation. It's by revelation. This is what is going on every Sunday in this country, in Africa, and around the world. What of the issue of seed sowing? I believe in giving. I believe in seed sowing. You are greedy. You don't sow seed. You will go down. I guarantee you. God will not cause you. Decide in the system. No matter how you argue. So I'm, I'm not here to bring all kinds of debates. Um, what is working for you? You keep it there. And what is not working for you? You can change it if you want to. I don't like draw soup. I can't preach against, against. My experience with draw soup is that we are not friends. Are we together now? Yes, but draw soup is your favorite, remember. And I'm, I'm so, I mean, two of us, pro, provided we are surviving. So you believe whatever constructs your success and leave it there. But one thing I know is that in the final analysis, you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. But what about seed sowing? A man of God's birthday is announced one year to the birthday. As soon as one is finished, they start preparing. There are, there are circles where the man of God makes his wish. I want a Lincoln Navigator. Limited edition. How much is it? 85 million. And everybody begins. Heads of department bring 10, 10. Escorts bring 5, 5. And you know, all kinds of things. It's wrong. All in the name of fatherhood. This, all these destructions come in the name of fatherhood. I know a man of God respectfully so that one of his sons got tired and literally ran out of this country because the son pays for every flight ticket. Every what? Flight ticket. Including emergency flight tickets. The emotional son made up his mind one day that I will stand by you. I was sent to lift up um, your hands like like Aaron and her. And the man of God believed that testimony. And from that day, provide, even if you are bringing him for ministration and you are paying, he will tell the son, I'm on my way going. And the son will, it inconvenience them. Sincerely, it's a true story. Almost tore the marriage apart. Because when God blesses them, that, and you know, it's not like you are flying economy or, or, or all of this, that you can even book early and book in advance with a low price. Tickets that no matter what time of the year you book is still expensive. Fatherhood. Fathers, in all honesty and respectfully so, have been some of the greatest abusers of church members. 
All in the name of fatherhood. And remember the idea is don't talk against me. Don't talk to me. You dare do that, a cause will come. And truly it will come. Don't think it's just a joke. It will come. But the idea is threat. You don't threaten people into submission. You impact people. You pour your life to them. You become a representation of Jesus. And then as a result, they follow after you as you follow after Christ. That's God's concept of leadership. Next concept. The concept of wealth and success. This one is a big one in the body of Christ. Especially in recent times. It looks like there is a very strong campaign against what we believe and know to be materialism. And I will never be um, one who proposes um, a lost, driven, materialistic lifestyle. I come from a very conservative background. It's an advantage to me. And my persona, as a person, I'm, I'm quite conservative. But... The level of attack that has come on anybody called into the ministry of wealth and prosperity is, is becoming disturbing. Because it's, it's, it makes it look like the moment you capture in your theology a provision for God to bless you and bless people, you are qualified for a harsh attack. An attack under the covering of materialism. And it's not so. Some of the mo most materialistic people around the world don't have any money at all. And yet we have attacked people again and again. Snap a man of God with an expensive anything, anything, even Bible, and they attack the person immediately. Why will you buy this kind of Bible? What part of it is different from the English? You, are? you say, all these kinds of things. And let me tell you the danger. The danger is that believers who should rise financially, now fear is making a lot of people to just retreat and say, well, I wanted to share the principles that will make people to rise while they serve God. But now that I'm being attacked, I'm not ready for this. Just serve God and go to heaven no matter how you get there. God will fix up every remains of you that arrives there. But for now, I'm not, I'm not going to be part of it. It's terrible. And then on the other side, on the other hand again, I'm telling you there are people sincerely, let me tell you, I've heard different gospels on wealth and success that is poisonous. What did I call it? Poisonous. Dangerous is the kind of gospel that takes God out of your life. Lost, lost after things. Do you know that, let me tell you this sincerely, You've, you've seen this suicide happening all over now. People dying around. I believe that part of the reason may be the frustration that is coming based on the gospels that we have taught people. Because if I teach you, for instance, that your true worth is based on the jeep you have or the house you have and you are now 38 years old. Are we together now? Yes. No husband, no wife, no car, no child, no jeep, no house. You will hang yourself. We have to be careful because the communications that we are bringing in the body of Christ, and sometimes even we men of God create a basis for competition. Oh, this is my son. You are a true son. You mean that car outside? You just brought it. Oh, amazing, amazing. This grace is working. And other sons are saying, so what are we now? That this thing is not working. I mean, the Bible never said the sons of Elijah stopped being his sons. Although one person received the mantle, they were still sons. So most believers now are under pressure. Look at the speed with which men of God are informed the moment any believer does anything. That is nice. Oh, come to my house. We we'll tie a ribbon from one side of the building to the other. And the man of God comes to cut the ribbon. And then the son becomes a deacon. And then the rest now that may be struggling around, they are under pressure. And the wives will usually say, my husband, are you really a man? What are you? You are not. I mean, you, you, every, what kind of a man are you that all doors are closed towards you? 
Prayer or no prayer doesn't make a difference in your destiny. And the man sits down and is on his way to taking drugs or killing himself. Look at young people who are depressed now. Once you cannot wear something expensive on your head as a lady, how much is this we've won? 700 naira. <sighs> you are too beautiful um, um, for this kind of we've won. It's a dangerous indoctrination. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh huh. So what? The, did God teach that just because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you, you run your life down? This is what has destroyed a lot of people. People have gone to buy cars they don't have the money to maintain. People have gone to buy houses and, and death is yoking their neck to death because of a point that was trying, was, was trying to prove. There are churches that don't have the capacity for expansion yet. They just got up, were taking over, and now open a branch in Zamfara, in Sokoto, in Maiduguri, they killed it. Another concept, the concept of what we call glory realm and supernatural encounters. Listen very carefully. I'm a person of encounters, but listen carefully. There are all kinds. Do you know, let me tell you, something happened in Zaria. Those of you who were there, I, when this concept came into this city, those days, by God's grace and with all humility, we are privileged to be some of the people who were at the forefront of the move of the Spirit when it had to do with encounters and supernatural manifestation of heavenly things. I remember those times we downloaded videos of Ruth Heflin and Joshua Mills and all of these people to show angels, visitations and all of that. But something strange happened. When that move started happening in Zaria and people started having gold doors, people started having this, that move did not reach two weeks and everything left. And the Lord told me that the reason why that thing left was because he, he did not want what he was doing in Zaria to be corrupted with supernatural experiences. People will sit down and pray for hours looking at their hands, waiting for their hands to shine as a result of gold dust. Everybody will hold everybody's leg, whether short or not, and say, sit down, that leg must grow. Have, did you see that concept? And just imagine in their minds that leg is coming out. The person was fine. When legs grow, don't you see it? This, listen, listen. And most of these things happen with charismatics. So the average man of God is looking for this something spooky. And your hand is wet and you say, wow, supernatural oil. Let me tell you, many of you know my experiences. I've had these supernatural experiences of oil, of all of these things. So I know what I'm saying. What of those who sit down and imagine angels? It can even be an attack. It can be a spirit being. Now, please listen to what I'm telling you. So people keep roaming around searching for visions and searching for experiences. They close their Bible for weeks. And they, are, they just want the room, something wind. This is the wind of this. They quickly record it on the phone. And say that I had an encounter. And the devil says, this is, this is an open door. And one day that person will get a visitation. Because you don't know what a spirit looks like. Angels don't have feathers. Read your Bible. No, feathers are not for angels. pride in these experiences. I am a woman of God because I see visions every day. 
I am a man of God because I see visions. A believer who is walking based on the word now closes the Bible and says, I'm going on a three-day fasting. Lord, what is in this vision that I can't see? Are we together now? And you are fasting and praying and people begin to pray until they land in the hospital with, with problems of bipolar. Talk to me. Am, am I, am, am, it's true. Doctors will tell you. How many times have we gone? I'm not, I'm not insulting the people. Don't get me wrong. But many of them continue to pray until they have encounters. Remember the gentleman that came from one of the cities, the Jesus guy and the Judas? Do you think that guy started like that? He started as a sincere servant of Christ, but with the obsession for encounters. People will get up in the night and they are looking for anything superstitious. The moment light, there are birds that come in front of my window every morning. They keep pecking on the window. I can, I, can now, I can now snap those things. I mean, anybody who studied the biological sciences know what these birds are trying to do. Sometimes they sharpen their beak. I can now get up and keep recording these birds for one week and say I have divine messengers. How many, how many birds were messengers in the Bible? Birds brought raven. Yes, I agree. How many birds spoke in the Bible? They only brought food and leaf from Noah to confirm that the flood had finished. Many of you were doing well, believing the truth of scripture, until this era of vision just came and corrupted the purity of your experience. I'm not saying visions are wrong. We need encounters. Are we together? So because of this, many people now started studying Scientology. Are we together? And all kinds of new age movement. The, the ability to align your body and your consciousness to the forces of the universe in the seven regions of the earth. And before you know it, it starts working. Because you have touched something that is not of God. Two years down the line, you, you are seeing abilities working in you automatically that you know cannot be regulated. There are many people walking in power today. They are not devilish, but their appetite for power and the supernatural open them up to anything. Whether it is a shrine, whether it is a man of God, whether it is a prophet, just give me something that will shut the mouth of, of, of the people from my region. And you receive something because everyone that seeks... There are people who have studied transcendental meditation and yoga all in a bit to mix religions. They just want this out of body experience desperately. They want to come back with messages and they've had it. And many of them, you know that there are different pseudo-Christian sects that have all kinds of encounters. They can, they, they can program your body to have all kinds of astral travels. To the point now we are confused in the body. Because we have to balance this. It is alright when an insincere person encounters these graces. But what happens if these graces have been received by your friend? Do you call your friend fake? Do you call your brother or your sister or your husband or your wife fake? One of the latest ones now in the body of Christ is prophetic chanting. Everybody is holding red, uh, 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 what do they call it, phones. With all kinds, you don't sing, you just chant. Chanting didn't start today. And it is scriptural that there is a dimension of prophetic worship. But if you are not careful, very soon, one day you will be hearing the tongues. And it will sound like Arabic. The communicator does not even know when he has delved into something. See, look, let me tell you. Please hear me, believers. The apostolic and the prophetic were designed by God to create the coordinates 
the boundaries of the growth of believers as they themselves align to Christ. Be careful. Listen to what I'm telling you. Be careful. Do you know that the concept of chanting started from our forefathers? It was a trap. Anybody here that comes from regions where they do traditional festivals, you will know that these are things that... It's, it's a mystery in the spirit that was hijacked by dark powers. And it's part of the things that because God is preparing the church for the move of God, and so some of these ordinances have been restored, but if they are not guided... Any move is usually corrupted when there is no balance. So people begin to delve into some of these things. I'm showing you issues that need to be addressed to stabilize the growth of the church. Very soon we will not have choruses again in church. As soon as we come, we say, praise the Lord, welcome to Koinonia. Mike will start playing some. Everybody will just start shouting like a madman. You find your own path and you are singing. I'm not being sarcastic. Until one day, someone will find out that the more you sing, the more your neighbor is getting mad. And you are wondering. Have you not seen people whose hands were laid on them? And the moment hands were laid on them, they started having demonic encounters. It is not because they are the, 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 those who laid hands are necessarily evil. They themselves have not vetted the source of the power. They are sincere people. Random laying on of hands. More grace. It says lay hands suddenly on no man. Because laying on of hands is a system of transfer. It's also a system of exchange. Are we together? Now there are different other concepts coming. There is no heaven again. So says the vision that other people are coming with. Or many people are saying the heaven other people saw. Now they are seeing other higher heavens. Oh, come on, please. You, you go online and see people who have had encounters and came back with spirits who are saying forget all that thing. Because let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. Satan wants everything God wants. And the moment Satan discerns a move of God, he will come. Certain Christian sects, have you read how they started? Was it not encounters? They had encounters with spirit beings who attempted to correct scripture. And that's how error came. A time will come, I pray it does not happen, where you will be afraid to go to church because you are not sure of what that version of teaching will open you up to. Even these mysteries you see, these mysteries you see, if it's not guided, you will enter into mysticism in the name of mysteries. Every mystery in the scripture is just a mystery to be revealed. It is the revelation of the mysteries that we are concerned about. Because the highest mystery in the New Testament is Christ. And the highest mystery is called the mystery of godliness. That's it. That Christ became a man. The mystery of his incarnation and his virgin birth. Are we together now? Yes. His suffering in the flesh, his ascension, his glorification. That is the highest mystery. Every other one is an auxiliary mystery that connects to it. So that you don't just say, there are many people who say, ah, they send me texts. Papa, thank you for this mystery. Tonight I have a night with you and I want to share a mystery. I say, where, where is this one coming from now? And the terrible thing is if you don't balance this, anybody who fish is given from anywhere and try to trace it to you. <laughs> Miracle alert has made many people lazy. They have not seen that is proof of God's mercy. And sometimes it comes to encourage the faith of people. There is a level of spiritual knowledge if you have been given, you will never have miracle alert. God will say you are joking. This is too much laziness for the level of revelation you have. Go and get a job. 
go and, and give value to whom much is given. Talk to me. Much is required. Notice the people that have miracle alerts most times. They are people that God is encouraging. You are wondering why it didn't happen to you. I'm giving you the answer now. Because God is saying, I am not. Yes. Yes, sir. You can have it. But let, listen to me. If I sit down now and I say, Lord, why will, where will you give me miracle alert? God will say, Abba. God speaking, Abba. My son. To whom much is given. Don't, don't, don't embarrass the investments of God on your life. There are some things that were meant to encourage believers. You have been taught value. You have been taught diligence. Are we together now? You cannot expect God to just continue to do all of No. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Come up here. Is a call to know where to stand on these matters among many that you must know where to stand that you'll be unshakable you'll be immovable please listen to me that when you say I am a man of faith you know what you are saying I will never in my life with what I know today place value on anything in my life outside of Christ. My true worth is the blood of Jesus. My true worth is not pounds and dollars and cars. Please listen to me. You will never find me depressed not over money, not over house. I will excel. God will bring the houses. He will bring the cars. But never will it be that these things become the basis of my confidence. A newer car or a better car will not suddenly make me know that, ah, God, you are faithful. He's faithful. The apex of his faithfulness has been demonstrated already in what Christ did. Is God speaking to someone now? This must be the basis of your confidence. This is, this is, a, this is a vaccination against depression. Apostle, look at my life. Guess how old you think I am? Can you believe that I'm 41? Nothing is happening in my life. And you leave God. I know that God wants to bless you. But if you leave God because nothing is happening, you were not taught well. Leaving God because things are not going well in your life, my brothers and my sisters, is proof of weakness. It's not strength. What shall separate us from the love of God? That you get to a point where you stand. It is not what happens or what does not happen that governs your faith. Apostle, I'm coming for miracle service next week. I'm trusting God for a child. I agree. God will give you a child. But that you can look at God and say, Lord, if in my lifetime I don't have a child, you are still Lord. You are still King. I will serve you with the zeal of a woman with nine children. A lot is going on in the body of Christ that is a reflection of the poor teachings and mentorship. Lord, how can you do this to me? How can you do this to me? I'm going to make an example with someone now that will shock you. Madam, please stand. You, this one looking at me. Yes, please stand. Where are you coming from? This woman, let me tell you a little story. This woman, you see, follows me almost everywhere I go to minister. She's had a child with a condition. And she's been trusting God for the healing of that child. I apologize if I embarrass you. I hope I didn't. Look at this. I'm just trying to encourage people. Up until the time I went to Eboi, this woman, you see, followed me with her child. I observed this woman as she prayed and cried and shouted before God. And I knew that it was not just for the child. From Enugu, she's here again to come and receive the word and to go. Please listen to me. I want you to listen to my message knowing God experientially. 
Go and get that message and listen to it. There is something about our concept of Christianity that we must balance. If we do not balance this, we will be in big trouble. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of things. Brothers and sisters, we are people who are prosperous by the grace of God. God has been merciful to us as individuals and as a ministry. We will never look down on the role of the blessings of God. But far be it from me that wealth and all of this will rise above Christ. With or without them, I tell you the truth, Christ remains Lord. This is what you should learn. All this, this backsliding talk, God didn't do this. I, 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 no, it is, it is proof that you are not grounded. If I come here and I find only 10 people in Koinonia, I will go back concerned and I will say, Lord, what is wrong? But to say, okay, Lord, I quit ministry. I will just go and write books and do seminars. No, sir, I'm a ministry for life. This thing we have come, it's not, it's not an ambition to use and make money. It is not because we didn't have options. It's a call by revelation. We have pledged our life and our blood. So when people love God and don't get money and then they are depressed and just sign out of ministry. Say me, I've retired. Oh, what are you doing? I want to start a block industry. Did you have to leave ministry to start the block industry? No. But somebody taught you that you have to choose either of them. Please listen to what I'm telling you and you will be sound and you will be balanced. A precious, precious man of God that I love very much. Just known him for not too long. Um, it's possible that he's even following now. Um, he lost his precious loved one and I remember us just conversing through the night and he was just crying and saying, Apostle, I cannot believe this. This precious woman I love with all my heart has gone to be with the Lord. And I told him, listen to me. I'm a man of God. I'm a miracle worker by God's grace. I have seen all kinds of miracles in my life and in this ministry. But one thing I can tell you is that every time we do not understand God, we tell him, Lord, you are greater. I played for him a song from my phone, Don Moen's song. And I encouraged him. I said, just keep quiet and listen to it as I play this for you. And when he finished, I told him, I'm standing by you and all of that. A foolish man of God said, no, no, let's forget this. Let's, let's go to that mortuary. I've been to the mortuary before. I've told you this thing. It doesn't mean I'm not a man of faith. Please listen to me. I'm teaching you the ways of God. This is the foolishness that is destroying young ministers. They will call police for you one day. If you don't learn the ways of God. There are times that you may not have answers as a man of God. Don't be embarrassed. It reminds people again that you are not God. And it reminds you too. The pride to always have answers to the issues of men will kill you as a preacher if you don't learn. It is okay to not have answers and recommend them to God who created you, the man of God. I told you I used to feel sad when I prayed for people and they were not healed, especially for barren women, it disturbed me for a very long time. Lord, why would you bring this kind of people to this ministry when there's this kind of problem? Let me ask you a question. What is the condition that must happen in your life today for you to leave God? Think about what I said very carefully. Don't assume you have the answer. If I want you to leave God today, what must I do to you? At what point will you leave God and say, I've had enough? When you don't have a husband, when you don't have a wife, when you don't have school fees for your children, or when you don't feel like you are growing spiritually, at what point in your life when your business fails, when your property is repossessed. 
I give you sound doctrine that will preserve your Christian experience. That in the maze of debates that continue to fly around the body of Christ, you don't join to scar people, but you stand immovable. I know whom I have believed. Megirma, Megirma, Megirma. Megirma, Megirma, Megirma. Megirma, 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 Megirma. Sing it one more time. Make it my, 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 If, if there's any really elderly person, don't bully anybody, but if there's any elderly person, please, they can sit some of this, this space here. Some of the worship team people can stand up. The gentlemen can stand up. Stand up and stay by the wall. Let our mothers sit down. If they are mothers or fathers, if you are, if you are an adult, but you are still young, please stand. It doesn't mean that just because... We know what elderly is. If you don't look like one of these are mothers, please stand. If you don't look like one of these are fathers, stand. But just to make sure that um, we help them. If there's a pregnant woman, let her sit. Our pregnant ladies are... No, no, no. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. If you are pregnant and there is a reason... Why you cannot stand, just wave your hand. Somebody will help you. Why am I doing these things? So that you will learn. And then you will know that these things were not acting. Are we together? We are not doing it to demean the younger people. But we are doing it to show you the excellency of the practice of the law of honor. Are we good? Can I continue? We'll find somewhere. You know, I'm so excited. It just reminds me of how this thing all started. Those days, those days, there was no suit, no nice clothes. Don't let all these things deceive you. We would wear just anything was fine. We didn't have the, the rigor of looking for any adornment that would cause pain in your wardrobe, you just picked your Bible and off you went. And we prayed without wondering who was fine, who was not fine. We knew no man after the flesh. It was Jesus and fire. That was all that was our concern. Praise the Lord. Imagine that you tried to pray to stop this rain and it didn't stop. Because the Bible says we have power over everything. Is that true? So imagine my precious people who were outside. That you lifted your voice and you said, Rain, I stand as a child of God. As a believer. And I stop you. And the rain stopped. Or the rain did not stop. And then you are suddenly embarrassed and discouraged. And you say, Lord, this thing does not work. No. Listen, I'm not teaching you to be faithless. But I'm teaching you that when things do not work, do not be embarrassed. He is still Lord. He is still Lord whether results happen or results do not happen. Okay? Right, so let's talk about greatness for a few minutes and then we'll spend time praying. If this rain does not stop this night, you can be sure that we are going to pray until you come up here that this night. 
what, what I've been looking for I finally found. You'll be free to remove your shoes and pray till you come up hither. The visions you've been wanting to see, you'll see this night. You will pray until the visions come. Greatness. Please look up. In this kingdom, God is not against your being prosperous and your being influential. Let me balance that very quickly. I've heard men of God say all sorts of things. If you're standing and you can't write, don't worry. You can always get the message. I know you are wet and your writing materials may be wet. Don't worry. I've heard preachers say that God's idea is not for you to be the most blessed person. God's idea is not for you to be this and that. In a bit to create balance to materialism. That teaching in itself is error. God is not against your being great. Please listen. God is not a God of mediocrity. Heaven is not a place of mediocrity. Are we together? And everywhere the value system of the kingdom has been re received, there is excellence, there is leadership, there is influence. So it is alright to aspire to be great. Please listen. It is alright to aspire to be wealthy. It is all right to aspire to rise to the pinnacle, the zenith of your pursuit. But the problem here is when your relevance and your self-worth is tied to those things. Are you getting what I'm teaching now? That when you say, I am a failure until Naira and Kobo in my pocket proves otherwise, there is a big problem there. I am a failure until a husband or a wife comes into my life. I am a failure until my womb can give birth to a child. No. No. That's where I have a problem. A man's life, the Bible says, does not consist in the abundance of the things that he has. That means it is possible, quite honestly, to have nothing in this life. And if you have Jesus Christ, it is called the riches. Give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible calls it the riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches. Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. What? The unsearchable riches. That means if you have Christ, you are great. You have Christ, you are wealthy. Honestly speaking, you may not be able to do much in this life because the human beings that work in this system will not regard what you call valuable as real value. But I can tell you one thing. That half everything in this life minus Christ, you are not great. True greatness is not measured in silver and gold and pounds and dollars and houses and cars. True wealth is measured in the abundance of your knowledge of Christ. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. Very powerful song. Sing it one more time. Yeah. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. And if all I say is true. That's more than enough. If all I say is Jesus, 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 money minus Jesus is poverty, education minus Jesus is illiteracy, influence minus Jesus is mediocrity. Jesus is the one who gives value to everything in your life. 
Redefine your concept of greatness, my brothers and my sisters. To know that anything you have in this life, please listen, minus Jesus, you do not have anything. That means the one thing in your life that gives value to everything must be protected at all costs. Are we together now? Yes. We have garages for our cars. We have stores for our food. But many times we do not have a place for God in our homes and our hearts. We have little safes maybe in our houses where we keep the little money that we have. We have bank accounts. We have ATM cards that we protect so jealously. The moment your ATM falls, by the next day you are on your way to the bank to get another one. But where is his place in your heart? Listen very carefully. And sometimes we men of God have brought a wrong concept. When you stand to see Joshua Selman dress, ah, this is wonderful. That may be wonderful, but all this is nonsense without Jesus. I repeat, nonsense without Jesus. The true value of a man, my brothers and my sisters, is not the jeep that is packed. When you notice, no man will intimidate you who does not have Jesus. You don't stand and a millionaire comes without Jesus. And just because he's driving a very pricey car and traveling in a private jet, you stand with your Jesus and look stupid. Not after today. I know that I will increase. I know that I will strive to be the best. But with or without prosperity, I am still wealthy and I am still great. This is very powerful. It's a revelation that God gave me early in life. I have never felt more useful, more important because of the things around me. I tell you sincerely, the way I felt before I had a car and the way I feel now, in all fairness, is not really different. The only difference is that it's afforded me more convenience. But to feel more important with a car key or without a car key, it will never happen to me. Whether a car or no car, I know that I'm valuable. Jesus has made me so. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you pass jam or you don't pass jam, passing jam is just a system of getting you to navigate the path of success on earth. Whether you pass jam or not, you are still valuable. Whether you go abroad or not, you are still valuable. Please listen to me. As a graduate, whether you have a job or not, I'm showing you the antidote to depression and suicide and all of these things. Come Sam, come Pastor Alpha, come Pastor Femi. Now look at this gentleman looking all sharp. And then imagine with me, for instance, that you stand among them and you feel, I'm not rich. I am not this. This is what the devil will tell you. Remember that Satan is the master of the sense realm. Everybody say the sense realm. That means you will use what you see, what you hear, to tell you things about your life that God did not say. So he will tell you, you cannot belong here. Why? Because you don't have this suit. You don't have this kind of shoe. This kind of that. And then you back out. This guy is not born again. This guy is not born again. This guy is an idol worshiper. But just because they have physical things, you reduce Jesus to become nothing. And you will give up Jesus a thousand times to become like this man. I will never envy any unbeliever in my life. I will be inspired by their achievements, but not to the detriment of the riches of Christ in my heart. Is God speaking to us? Men of God, learn this. It is not when you begin to wear golden rings and golden chains and you have a convoy of people driving you. That's not when you become successful as a man of God. Please hear me. It is not when you have protocol standing at your back and call. You now say ministry is doing well. That's a devilish indoctrination. Be excellent. 
but not at the detriment of your spiritual sanity. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more. What's the other part? When you understand this song, you will go back to your one room. Now that it's raining, maybe rain is falling on your bed now. And you sit down and suddenly you are wondering, but if I really knew God, wouldn't I be rich? Wealth has nothing to do with the knowledge of God. Wealth has to do with the application of the principles of value and productivity. Don't reduce the wealth of your Christian experience and insult the wealth of Christ in you. You check your CGPA and you see a third class and you just say, I'm finished. Ah! This life is over. No job. No nothing. Ah! I tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to myself. Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to the world. Jesus, you're more than gold. I tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Somebody met me years ago. I said, there's a trend of suits, apostle. That at your level you should start wearing. I said, why? He said, because that's what is raining. I said, I don't know who they are, but let me tell you this. I dress well, but I will never be under pressure. Never be under pressure. I will be as decent and excellent as I can be, but I reject any pressure upon my head to mismanage my finances because I'm trying to prove to people that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive with or without miracles. Did you hear what I said? My prosperity is not the reason Jesus is alive. Anybody waiting for me to be rich, to believe in Jesus, will soon go to hell. Because wealth is not the seed for salvation. The convicting power of the Spirit is. Please be careful so that you don't get under pressure to say, I want people to see my results so that they will be born again. It is true that your results affect them. But if their heart is made up to be hardened, there is nothing they will see in your life that will take them to Jesus. People saw the miracles Jesus performed. Yet when he resurrected, some doubted. It takes the spirit to convict men. It is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. I'm drumming it today that in coming up hither, your greatest value is Christ. Not a Benz. Not a Navigator. Not a Rolls Royce. Thank God for these things. But they are simply metals without Christ. Are we together? Thank God for your beauty. If that is the highest perception of value in your life, then it's unfortunate. Christ in us. Talk to me, believers. Christ in us. Christ in me. Not certificate with me. Not a good shoe with me. Not just PhD with me. I don't demean these things. We are blessed people and successful people in this ministry. But I tell you, I count all things but dung for the excellency of Christ.
God forbid. But if my house is to catch fire now, and I stand before God to tell you, if my house is to catch fire, and they tell me, Apostle, you have one minute to carry the most valuable things in your house before it gets burned to ashes. The first thing I'm going to carry, I won't carry a Bible. You think I'll carry a Bible, I can buy another one. I won't carry a Bible. I will carry my notes. The truths that God gave me. Are we together? I will carry my notes. Number two, I will carry my phone. My phone is important. And my laptop, my, my gadgets. I will carry them. Number two, or number three, I will carry, I think I will carry my card that has my ATM and all these things. And it's not because of loss or fear. It's out of responsibility. If I'm not able to carry it, I will not feel bad. Once I carry these books and I can carry my phone, my contacts mean a lot to me. Any other thing in my house can burn to ashes. The cars can burn to ashes from where they came from. How do you respond when things leave you? It tells me to the degree to which Jesus is enthroned in your life. You lost 10,000 naira till today you are still depressed. You lost it last year. You still believe you will find it. It's carnality. My brothers and my sisters, it is lost. Are we together? Jesus. The greatest asset this man has that stands before you is not a flourishing ministry. It's not bank accounts with money. It is not properties and assets. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, the most valuable thing in my life is not outside me. I don't trust anything outside me. They can come and they can go. Is God doing something in your mind today? This grip on things as the proof of success. No. Don't be carried away by material things. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. Please hear me. The real value of the believer is the riches of Christ. I need to drum this again and again. So don't act. Whatever leaves you, check whether Jesus Christ left too. If he's still there, relax. You are still blessed. You are still great. You are still wealthy. Even when death comes to take your life, if Jesus goes with you, you did not lose. That's why Paul said to die is gain. Provided he left with you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Certificate without Jesus Christ is vanity. It may not look like it because of the job it can give you. But keep growing old. You will soon find out that everything minus Jesus is vanity. Marriage minus Jesus is vanity. It doesn't look like it because of the children that come. It doesn't look like it because of the status that it gives you. Ah. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time. Is you. you are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. That's a true believer. Alpha. Omega of my life. I cannot define my worth by what phone I'm using. Hear me, believers. There are some of you now, your prayer request that you've written for next week is a phone. Oh God, give me a phone of 200,000. What's the most expensive phone? What's the class of phones? A what? iPhone. 
So you have an iPhone and you move around with it, expecting respect, demanding respect. I have an iPhone. No, that's not somebody who knows Christ. My shoe is 250,000. That shoe cannot raise the dead. That shoe cannot give life to any other person. I'm not teaching you to be mediocre. I'm teaching you to be blessed but with understanding that everything around your life minus Jesus is useless. Our fathers used to say, take the world and give me Jesus. We hate what they said, but the idea was that nothing compares to him. But right now, our lost, driven generation says, give me Jesus and give me other things. This is what we mean. I don't want to lose anyone. Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with prosperity? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with greatness and appointment? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ to a flourishing ministry? I am not great because I lead a great ministry. No. I am not great because of the results that happen in this ministry. Please don't get it wrong. You are not great the day you enter your own house. Hmm. You are not great the day you buy the car you want. You are not great the day you see nine zeros or six, seven, eight, nine zeros behind the figures in your bank account. The wealth of my relationship with Jesus is something that nothing in this life has the capacity to take. I'm teaching you and I'm giving you a new idea. The carnality in this our world and our generation will destroy us if we don't restore Jesus back to his place and will depress a lot of young people. The next time someone sees you and says with all this you're going to church, look at you. You can't even afford food of 1,000. You tell him no problem. I am learning the principles. I am coming. But let me tell you for your information. It is not these things that define my value. My value has been defined. The day Jesus said it is finished on that cross. Let me tell you sincerely, he stamped my value. God gave Jesus Christ as a receipt to collect me. When you carry 100 naira to buy Zobo, which one do you love more? The Zobo more than the money. So the father carried Jesus and gave him to take you back. And some, some person with, with 500,000 wants to look down on the power of Jesus in your life. I refuse to be defined by what is around me or not around me. I need the things around me that makes for a successful life. Why? Because they add up all together and help my efficiency as far as my living on earth is concerned, and then my promoting the interests of God. But never will it be the basis of my confidence. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. Believers, talk to me. But we will trust in the name of our God. He says, vain is the help of man. Never put your confidence in the abundance of the things that surround you. Anything that is truly great, I put it inside me. If it cannot enter inside me, it's not great enough. My bank account cannot enter inside me. Huh. No. The closest thing to Jesus and the, the Holy Spirit in my life is my intellectual property. At least it entered my brain. It didn't reach my heart, but it entered somewhere. That means I value my intellectual property even more than money. Please have priority for your life. Don't go back home worshipping clothes, worshipping houses, worshipping cars. It's idolatry. Worshipping talent. The riches of Christ. This thing has given me rest. Way before God started giving me cars and vehicles, 
And not because I didn't have the capacity to get them. God prohibited me from getting all these material things for a long time. And I wondered why. Until the Spirit of God revealed it to me. He said, I want you to be a correct model to the young man. That their sense of worth is not in the things around them. Miracle service will be here with crowds outside. I would dress with a suit that can buy a bike that is carrying me. And the bike man will come and drop me. I will drop from the bike with my Bible. And enter with joy. I'll never forget one time that the protocol collected the car of someone to come and pick me. I rebuked them. I said, never collect any member's car to come and preach, to come and carry me. Coming for koinonia with a car does not add or remove the anointing on my head. When I was fasting, the car was not there. So today that God has brought some of this tea and bread, I will be stupid to believe that because of this tea and bread, I am greater. No, sir. My greatness is so... In fact, if ever I am greater, it is because of lives that are transformed, not things acquired. Do not measure greatness in this kingdom just by things acquired. Things acquired should be the last of the indices to measure greatness. It is the wealth of Christ. Then number two, the opportunity to provide transformation in lives. If Pastor Alpha was a drunkard, and through my life and ministry, he has become a man of God, for instance. This is true impact. This is greatness. Next time someone tells you, I am great, tell him, show me who you changed. If you cannot show me a life, not just somebody you fed, who came to know the Lord through your life? You are poor unless your money brings someone to Jesus. You are ignorant except your education provides a platform for someone to know the Lord. John chapter 1 from verse 5 and 6 and then to 7, remember what the Bible says. There was a man sent from God, he says. His name was John. He says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness to the truth, that through him, his witness, all men might believe. The real value of anything in your life is how it contributes to glorifying the name of Jesus and then advancing the cause or, or, or making for the betterment of people's lives. There are many millionaires who are not great. There are many educated people who are not great. There are many pastors with crowds who are not great. There are many miracle workers who are not great. It is the measure of Christ in you and the measure of the impact that your life can provide. He is everything. He is everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time. You. you are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. So I can take my gold and lay it before him. My silver lay it before him. My achievements lay it before him and say, Jesus, you are above them all. That when men clap for me because of things, I remind them that none of these things can take you. Are we together? We are going to pray. Thank God it's raining. You will pray. You will pray. There's a bus to carry you. But you will pray. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Please give me volume. Much less love and endless work. Nothing in this world can satisfy 
Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. One more time, listen. What is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hey, your presence is heaven to me. Sing it from the depths of your heart and with understanding. Your presence is heaven. Give me you, hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you. Hallelujah. First prayer point. Lord, I'm tired of exalting shadows in my life. Let everything be dethroned tonight and Jesus alone lifted to the zenith, the pinnacle of my life. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of exalting certificates above Jesus. Tired of exalting my bank account above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting anointing above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting visions above Jesus. Tired of exalting gifts and dreams and prophecies above Jesus. Tired of exalting ministry above Jesus. Marriage above Jesus. Business above Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Don't look around. Pray. Be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, of this world. 
let me show you how to truly be great. When you come up hither, Jesus also comes up hither in your life. Higher. Higher than anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second prayer point is a very personal prayer point. Lord, what attachment do I have to anything in this world above you? What attachment? There is nothing wrong with having things. But when these things have you, they are about to destroy you. Lord, detach me. Detach me from any other thing that is not you. Lift your voice and pray. Pray seriously. Detach me. Detach me from the obsession for money. Detach me from the obsession for fame. Detach me from the obsession for things. Detach me, oh God. Let my true value be Jesus. Please pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Detach me from the pressure of wanting respect on account of what I have acquired, on account of my certificates. They are not useless. But they are nothing, nothing to be compared to Jesus Christ. Detach me, O oh God. Detach me, O oh God. Is someone praying? Use tonight, use this opportunity God has given. Detach yourself. And with it will go the high blood pressure. And with it will go the depression. And with it will go the suicidal thoughts. I detach myself. The pressure to have things so as to gain respect. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Praise the Lord. Now listen everybody. We are praying. There are many of us here. We come from families. Please listen. And we come from territories where the prevalent mindset is earn your respect by the things you show. Are we together? Now, there's nothing wrong with our families and our region. But I'm just saying that many of us by default are under pressure. They look at you as a lady and say, the day you bring the man you will marry, then you will earn our respect. The day you bring us a child, you will earn our respect. The day, gentlemen, you bring us an employment letter from a reputable firm. So there's pressure everywhere. What are you doing? Well, I'm trusting God. I'm teaching in a small place. That's it. You are, you are a shame to this family you hear. You are a reproach to this family. Look at your younger ones, they say. Look at this and that. You are going to pray. Father, the stress. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want you to dethrone those things and say, my life and my work will never be built on the expectations of men. I cancel it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. I know you've not been able to take in, but refuse to allow yourself what come from being able to be pregnant, pregnant or not. Jesus, exalted in your life, is the greatest asset you have. Living in a rented apartment or not, Jesus, in your life, Christ glorified in and through you is your greatest testimony. Apostle, I've never healed the sick. I also want to work miracles. And you are fasting and killing yourself for the wrong reason. My greatest testimony 
is Jesus. Glorified. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is that God dwells in me. That Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. We are going to round up shortly, but listen to me. There is no telling the degree of pressure. Some of us are sitting on pressure every day. Your father says at your age, I was already a millionaire. You are now 35. Shame on you. You can't even send money back home. And so all you are seeking for in God is his hand to prosper you. So that you will buy a car and rush back home and say, finally, you want a car, here it is. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than Truly, if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than Prophesy gold. one more time. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Listen to me. When you see me teach like this, it is because the Spirit of God is ministering to us. Brothers, hear me. By God's grace, we will continue to teach you the principles that will empower you and make you great. But don't get into... That's why many young boys today are becoming criminals. Do you know why? Because they have told them you must bring... God gives people speed. I agree. But remember my teaching. When your soul dies for you to prosper. It's not true prosperity. Many young men right now are becoming criminals. And you know why? Because of pressure. And please let me encourage us. Those of us who are parents here. And listening. Let's be careful as we put pressure on our children. Go and bring a man for me. To, a man that you will marry. Go and bring a woman that you will marry. Give us a child. We are waiting. Bring a car. We are tired. Let's be careful. It takes time for anything valuable to emerge. Allow people to go through the law of process until God places his hand upon their lives. Every one of us started from somewhere. If you saw some of us 15 years ago, there will be nothing in us that is desirable. But God was in the making. And we were given the opportunity to grow. We must give others opportunity to grow. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody put pressure on you and say, bring this. Some of you at home right now, you don't even have gari and sugar and you are embarrassed. Because when they tell you, confess, the, I am a child of God, I am a this and that, you are ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed of, my brother and my sister. Every one of us, there were times, we've seen, you, you hear me share my story here. I'm not ashamed of yesterday, because yesterday was the ladder that brought me to my today. You are climbing your ladder, climb it with honor. When someone comes to your house and all you have is Gary, don't go and borrow minerals from any shop. Tell the person, as you know, as Apostle has been teaching, I'm on my way climbing the ladder. Sincerely, I don't have much physically. A wise person will say, I understand. We listen to the message together. A foolish person will say, you are ashamed. Leave him to carry his ignorance out of your life. Are we together? I want to drum it. It is ugly to see men attached to things. The secret to getting things is to be attached to God. The more you are detached to things, they will follow you. You will drive them, they will refuse to go back. 
There is nothing in my life today. I stand by the truth of heaven under God. There is nothing in my life today I cannot give. There is nothing that is too special in my life that cannot leave. No. When anything enters my life, there is an orientation center before it finally arrives. It's given an orientation. You are a temporary asset. At any point, the master calls. You are out and you are going. The only thing that I will die protecting is Christ in me. Who is the hope of glory. If I fall down here, my brothers and sisters, and I stop breathing, I know what you will do. You will pray for me for a few minutes, trying to get me back to life. And then if it does not work, the doctors will come together and you will rush me to Shika. And if they put a stethoscope and say, ah, this guy has died. How can our apostle die? <laughs> While you are talking, I'm watching you. I'm saying, oh dear. You better listen to my messages. Go back and get koinonia. I'm on my way. I'm already going happy. You pray for me to come back. I see those chariots. You are joking. I'm on my way. I mean, Apostle, don't talk like this. What if you die? Don't be foolish. Don't you know death also listens? Freedom came in my life when I stopped holding things. Freedom came in my life when everything minus Jesus in my life is a stranger. Everything in my life is a visitor. No visitor sleeps in your house. No matter how late he must look for, bike and go away. The only occupant, not even a tenant, is Jesus. He's giving me peace. I'm telling you sincerely. I live a very peaceful life. The higher he lifts me, the more confident I am. If you are confident because an alert entered your account, something will happen when the alert is no more there. This is what God is working in you today. I know it looks like time is going, but pay attention. Could this be why you are praying and blessings are never coming? Because the affinity you have for those things is a risk for God to trust you with it. There are preachers who want anointing so bad, they will remove Jesus to create space for the anointing. Jesus, come out, let me have some more space for oil. Billy Graham never performed any known miracle, as we know. I don't believe that is the optimal for a preacher. We should press to every dimension available. But one thing we know is that Billy Graham changed lives. His gospel molded civilization. Captains of industry listen to him. Kings listen to him. That is true wealth. Come up hither. And the first thing he saw was the throne room. Come up hither. And the first thing he saw was the throne room. When he was down, he saw different things. But now when he rose higher, his attention was called to the worship of only one person. The rain is almost done. We'll pray one more prayer. And then I'll take the altar call. And then we'll be ready to dismiss ourselves when the rain is done. But please hear me. The Lord told me something years ago. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I thought it was a joke. And I said, Lord, you mean that I become a mirror? It's easy for me. It's easier to reflect Jesus in our world today than to reflect yourself. The world will always show you something wrong. So reflect Jesus and be at peace. If you reflect yourself, they will say you didn't bab well this week. Your head is too big next week. Ah, you reduce it, it's now too small. You would have left it the other way. Reflect Jesus and enter your Sabbath. Hide behind the cross. 
and let men know if he prospers me he only prospered so that his name will be lifted if he anoints me he only brought the anointing so that his name will be lifted listen please don't trivialize this night's teaching I'm, I'm pointing to you the origin of high blood pressure BP and all of these things come from this revelation I need to prove a point how will they know I'm not an anyhow person until I show so let me get a job and show my life and all that consists in this life has been poured like a drink offering I've told the Lord do whatever you want to do with me sincerely it's a prayer I have lost the pain and the psychological pressure that comes trying to live life my own way I found peace when I lost the consciousness of trying to prove a point I found the anointing when I stopped thinking about miracles and breakthrough when I started thinking about Jesus and the people he sent me to then the anointing came for as long as I thought about my reputation let people know that you called me very sincere but it never brought grace but I said Lord let them see you through my life give me an opportunity to be a blessing within the lifetime you have given me let me tell you this if Christ tarries and my work on earth is done I don't want it to be written in my grave oh great man this all that is nonsense he changed lives ah what a testimony he was truly a lover of God and through his life nations were restored to Jesus if you can write that buy a coffin of 2000 and put my body inside put it even inside pajamas that's the closest thing to sleep use the suit money and give a man of God who is still alive don't waste money by mundane nonsense I have learned the value of living the value of living is living for Jesus when you live for Jesus you have cheated life that in life and in death you have won you will live a happy life depression free depression free you learn that it is about you but not all about you can I pray for you take it down I want to pray for you we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with our love I have searched for you and I have found you. I have found you. You've won my heart. And I will lift my voice to you in worship. And I will worship with all my heart. If you will search for him, you will find him, truly. You will find him with all your heart. That's the call tonight. If you will search for him, you will find him. You will find him with all your heart. Father, I cry to you, O God of heaven, on behalf of your precious people. I love them with all my heart and you know it. I desire that they rise to dimensions of rest. And I am showing them one of the ways tonight. That the way to rest 
is to live for Jesus. The understanding that you are the definition of greatness in a man. And that nothing, nothing can define greatness in any man higher than you. By earthly standards, money, achievements can seem to bring certain levels of influence and they are important but teach us tonight the all-surpassing excellency of jesus in our hearts the hope of glory the crown the zenith the definition of greatness in this kingdom is christ enthroned in a life teach us that the definition of greatness in this kingdom is not the acquisition of things but Christ enthroned and exalted in a life. Help us, O oh God, to value your presence more than money. To value your presence more than gold. To value your presence more than the mundane things of this world. And Lord, in placing that value on you, may we lay up gold as dust. In the name of Jesus Christ. I detach you from any connection and any affinity you have to things especially money i declare that by this service let there be a cutting away in the name of jesus the obsession that you have to derive respect based on the things around you i pray that god will redefine value to you I pray for grace to survive the pressure that comes from society to conform to a mold so as to be respected that you will teach all around you that true value is Jesus and Christ enthroned in a life in the name of Jesus Christ listen and I pray for you that whilst you focus on exalting Jesus may everything that you need even the things you did not dream will come to your life at this level may my god bring them to your life in the name of jesus christ nothing in this life will ever possess you in the name of jesus christ father i pray sincerely sincerely please walk on us walk on us let this detachment continue even throughout this weekend in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now, please listen. Those are the other overflows. I know you may not be able to come, but there are people in here right now. Listen to me. On hearing my teaching tonight, the Lord is calling you higher, higher than the realm that you have been. And for many of us, Jesus is speaking to you, even through my voice. And he's saying, my son, my daughter, it's time for you to surrender completely and to receive of my life. Jesus is asking many of us, you've been carrying luggages. Please, hold on, no movement, please. Let me just make the altar call. There are people here that the Lord is speaking to. Probably you're here for the first time. You've been here multiple times. And the Holy Spirit is ministering to you right now. And he's saying, my son, my daughter, you have to relinquish attachment to these things. You need Jesus, not just as a religious proposition. Jesus did not come for Christians. His assignment is not to make Christians. His assignment is to lift men to become the lovers of God. Representations of the life of God. You are here and you belong to any of these categories let it be my joy tonight to lead you to jesus nothing to be ashamed of if you are in the crowd and you wish to come i'm sure that the ushers will clear the way wherever you are i'm counting one to five our time is up please boldly make your way right to the front here right to the front here someone is bold enough to make that decision don't wait for someone to be the first be the first if someone is coming, please clear the way. I see a few people coming. God bless you. God bless you. Please clear the way for them. Is this the best you can do? I don't believe this is the only person. There are people the Holy Spirit is speaking to. The Holy Spirit is speaking to. Make your way quickly. Join them very quickly. 
Join them very quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. He's given you a new beginning. This is why you came tonight. No matter how far, make your way. Don't say, Apostle, they are looking at me. Please stand. Please stand. They are not looking at you to laugh at you. God bless you, Ma. God bless you, Sas. They are not looking at you to laugh at you. This is a family. They are looking at you to encourage you to say, I rejoice with you and I salute your boldness. Hallelujah. In one minute, I believe that there are people too who are saying, Apostle, I remember making such a decision, but right now as it is, I know that I need to truly rededicate my life to Jesus. I'm not doing it for the first time, but I really need to do it seriously. I feel that the, the things of this life have strangled the reality of Jesus Christ in my life and I need that restoration. You belong to that category and you want to join them. In one minute our time is up. Please quickly, quickly make the bold step to come join them right now. It's not by force. Nobody will pressure you, but you know yourself and you know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. The Bible says that in the day that you hear His voice, it says, harden not your heart as they did in the provocation and in the wilderness. Are you coming? God bless you. Join them very quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I salute your bold decision. May I request all of you who are standing, just lift your right hand, if you will, and repeat this prayer after me. Do so with understanding. Don't be embarrassed. Jesus is here, the one you came for. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I love you, and I believe in you with all my heart that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word, and I desire that you be exalted in my life. Therefore, I receive your life in exchange for my life. I receive your righteousness. I receive your grace. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I declare that my sins are forgiven. Jesus is my Lord, my Savior, and my King. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you for these precious ones. I decree and I declare over you that the life of God that is now within you will begin to produce and it will be effectual. In the name of Jesus, I plant in you a hunger for the things of the Spirit. And I pray in Jesus' name that you will continue to move from glory to glory. You will mount up with wings as the eagles. In the name of Jesus, I bless you and I declare that the joy of salvation is yours. And you will begin to walk in the consciousness of this life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. There's a lady waving her hands. All of you, please, may I request that you follow this precious lady waving her hands. And she will lead you to a group of people who will welcome you more warmly. Koinonia, can you celebrate them? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI. To stream Koinonia Live, go to Mixler.com and download the teachings on koinoniasermons.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0907 777 7853